This here is a butterfly bush, which would be um, Buddleia davidii. And this one looks like it had a little bit of trouble with the last winter. But butterfly bush, don't be, uh, don't be fooled. This is going to get to be five to six foot tall at some point. And um, it'll be covered with like bottle brush, little spikes of flowers, maybe six to eight inches long. And they're usually like a nice purplish color. And then this here is, uh, I don't know if a lady planted it. Uh, someone's going to have to help me out on this one. I know there's Solomon seal and I know there's false Solomon seal. And this one is, is one of those two. Maybe I'll look it up, but it's, let's see, it's, um, it's mid-June. So we got the flowers on the plant now and the leaves are alternate. We've got a leaf on one side, leaf on another side. And I think this is one of those plants that's good for naturalizing. Uh, if I can figure out if it's Solomon seal or false Solomon seal. But uh, someone help me out if, if you know what that is. And then here we've got um, variegated Lyriope. And I don't plant Lyriope a ton. I know farther, farther south they're big on it. Up here, Lyriope kind of does this. I mean, it's got, it has a bloom in the, in the spring, which is pretty. This is a variegated one. It's going to light things up. But Lyriope, you need to cut it back every year and it slowly spreads. It is a ground cover. Uh, it's just, uh, you need to cut everything back in the spring. So I'm not a huge fan of Lyriope. I usually use my Vinca Minor uh, or some form of Vinca for my ground cover because you don't need to cut it back as much. And it's, it's uh, uh, every spring Lyriope, if you look in here, you see all this dead foliage. In the spring, it comes back looking kind of dead. So I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Lyriope. We got another bed in the back of the house. Let's go take a look at that. On the, uh, on the way to the backyard, I, I came across this, uh, this ground cover whose name is, uh, oh, what the heck is its name? I think this one's on the invasive list, but, um, oh, it's gonna come to me as soon as I finish the video. So you see this nice variegated ground cover. Okay, that looks really cool. I mean, we're, we're literally, we've got a weeping cherry above here with the bird's nest that I just scared away. Are there any eggs in there? Or chicks? There she is. That's where the nest was. Um, this ground cover, it's in the edge of a driveway. It's definitely dry. It's under the roots of the tree. It's doing great. But what happens is, is, is when this ground cover reverts to the non-variegated form, it's very aggressive and it will take over uh, everything. So, so this is one of those ones that um, I think it's on the invasive list in Connecticut. And I will put the name uh, right here because I know I can find it uh, of what this is. And then this is, um, oh, I should know this one too. So I will put a picture up because I'll find the name of it. And this is a, a spring bloomer with white flowers. And then after it flowers, usually you'll cut the whole plant back a little bit to clean it up. And it does have a nice, uh, a nice uh, foliage to it. It's not, it's not sweet woodruff. Sweet woodruff's a ground cover. I know I have a beautiful picture of that one. I can show you guys. Uh, it's a spring bloomer. Uh, and we'll, we'll put that one up too. And I'm gonna move away so that Robin can get back to her nest. Agapodium podagraria variegatum, Bishop's Goutweed.